Hi there, it's been 10 years since EG's original release in September of 2008, and over the years it's been sporadically updated all the way to 1.7, so I thought I should talk about a couple of things regarding its development that you've probably never seen before. The oldest version of EG's source code is the alpha demo you can find in Scrappack 2 on my homepage, but we're about to dig a lot deeper than that. This is the second oldest surviving version of EG, version 0.3 from February of 2006. It has the original title screen with its bad photoshop background and giant face, three complete sectors with the first boss and interestingly it also has the original version of Sector C. Sector C was already implemented here and could be entered without collecting any posters, since they didn't exist yet. However, reaching the entrance is more difficult than in the final game. You have to leave the left part of the sector to gain 5 levels, get blown across this gap by the soldier to return to the only strength upgrade station in the sector, use it to get a strength of 5, kick this soldier over to the left platform, and wait for her to fire a rocket to break the wall. In the final game there's an invisible object that makes the soldier immediately fire a rocket as soon as she reaches the top of the slope, not to mention there are several hints to this secret. If you want to explore Sector C for yourself and see all the other things that weren't finished yet, including the really awful writing, there's a download link in the description below. As you can see, Sector C is already a bit different. In fact, it's almost completely made up of graphics and enemies from various NES games. The mushrooms here work like red nano fields, and as in the final game, you can poke the enemies to get a few different messages. Of course, you can kick them too. After Super Mario Bros comes Metroid, and immediately there's a secret room to the left. This room spoils what the next game is going to be, but there's nothing else of interest here. The energy dots left behind by the gamers are the same as the mushrooms, they're just reskinned red monofields. You can also touch these enemies, which makes it just say, ew, creepy. Oh, and there's no sound since that was one of the last things added to the game, along with the cutscenes, music, voice acting and stuff. I usually add the sound and music last in my games, but once I get to that part of development, I already have a clear idea in my head of what the game should sound like. Next up is Zelda The Adventure of Link. I really like these games, if you couldn't tell already. The lift here is just a regular lift. Unfortunately, the mysterious door here can't be opened, so it's just a run through a whole lot of bots to get to the end. If you touch them, it just says, ew, squishy. There's no relation between them and the Blitz in the final game, as those were inspired by the tiny bugs that crawl on you in Metroid Zero Mission. This is a really long room. This part of the sector, the hero part, is pretty much identical to what you see in the final game. The NES parts of Sector C were eventually replaced by graphics from Castle of Elite and Retro Battle, which were my most recent games at the time. The reason I decided to replace them was mostly because it felt a little cheap somehow. Like, Iggy does have some obvious references, but in my later games I thought that if you want to reference someone else's work, you should do it in a way that fits into the world itself, and preferably something that you have a very personal attachment to. Oh, and if you touch these drones it just says incompatible technology for cracking. Moving on, we get to another section that's basically the same as in the final game. The pulsating gamma effect only works when a game runs in full screen and isn't visible in this recording, but it makes the platforms a bit harder to see. It also slows the game to a crawl if your computer doesn't like it for some reason. As with the polygon drawing and other effects, I didn't know about this back when I made the game, as my 850MHz Windows 98 computer could run the game at around 300 FPS due to native direct draw support. And that's the original Sector C, and the original embarrassing clear sector graphics. Also present in a source for version 0.3 are the first two rooms ever built for the game. This is Dev Test, which is a pretty small room that kept changing as I added more features. To access this level in 0.3, press 9 on the main menu. As you can see, I really like the idea of kicking enemies through windows and stuff. The lower half of the room just has a ton of enemies, so I could see how many the game could handle at once. This is Dev Test 2, which just consists of more playing around with enemies and glass windows. You can reach it by pressing 0 on the main menu. 
Whenever I felt discouraged due to how tedious and painful it was to make this game, I would sometimes hop into these levels just to play around until I got some motivation back, which sometimes took several months. Sector 4 hadn't been made yet, but contains another small test area introducing the Komoto troopers fighting with the Tosan. It wasn't very difficult to do, the enemies just fight each other as if they were fighting the player, and use a similar system to see each other. You can jump into the holes on either side here to move on to Sector 5. Sector 5 and the remaining levels are just variations of the same placeholder. Later versions of the game that still exist as separate source files are basically the same thing as 0.3 but with more and more sectors completed. You can see the scouts don't have their sprites loaded properly here. And that's all I had for this video, thanks for watching.